Welcome everybody to this uh, MySQL shell for DBA session here at Procona Lab. So today we're gonna see how a DBA, a MySQL DBA can uh, use MySQL shell uh, for what, which task and how to use it. First slide is the state, um, is the safe arbor statement. So a slide that you are already familiar when you follow Oracle MySQL sessions, right? So I'll give you some time to read it. And we can start with the presentation first. So first, who am I? So my name is Frédéric Descamps. I am known as Le Fret or on Twitter. So if you uh, want to follow me, uh, to ask me question or to know more about MySQL and new stuff, you can just follow me uh, on Twitter. I am also a MySQL evangelist, meaning that I'm working for uh, the MySQL community team here in, in Oracle. I am managing MySQL for a long time. So the first version I ever installed was MySQL 3.20. I'm a DevOps believer. So if you have also question about uh, DevOps and MySQL world, just uh, reach me out. I'm always happy to answer. I'm living in Belgium and I have a blog where you can find a lot of information related to MySQL, which is lefret.be. So, MySQL Shell, a new tool. It's new, but not that new now because it's uh, around for some time already. You may be familiar with it, but maybe not everybody. So if you are still using the old MySQL client, I really encourage you to test MySQL Shell. So MySQL Shell, it's an interactive JavaScript, Python, or SQL interface, meaning that you can switch between these three modes that supports development and administration for the MySQL server and the components of it. So meaning that you can use the MySQL shell like you are using the old client, but you can do much more. You can do document store with the X protocol, right? And stuff like that. We won't go, um, go into, into document store today. There are other sessions uh, on that uh, you can find on my blog or on SlideShare and, and so on. So today we're gonna focus on more um, administration tasks and other tasks that the DBA has to do and how the shell can help him, right? So uh, we're gonna see uh, all that, uh, this, but to have more information about the shell, right? MySQL, MySQL shell provide interactive and batch operation. Batch operation are very interesting for people doing DevOps stuff, right? And we're gonna see uh, also just a bit of that. Uh, document and the relational uh, models. This is what I said earlier. So if you want to do document store, so store JSON and work with JSON documents directly in MySQL, it's possible using MySQL shell. You can do CRUD operation. So with the MySQL shell, you can also um, query uh, the database and use the data in, the, in MySQL without one single line of SQL. This is also possible. And it has all the, the format supported. And like I said, it uh, supports the classic protocol, what's the standard protocol, the one, one that uh, listens to 3306 by default, but also the X protocol, more advanced, that is uh, listening by default on 33060. Uh, but the shell can do much more. So this is an overview of what the shell can do. So as you can see, shell has a lot of feature and uh, we can use to upgrade from 5.7 to 8.0. We can use, it, it's a nice GUI, a nice, not GUI, nice command line, better than the, or much more, uh, I would say fancy and, and fun to, to work with than the classic uh, MySQL client. Uh, I will show you that, uh, you can change the prompt. Uh, so as I said, we have the three mode, but it's also very uh, powerful for other operation like dump and load, like import uh, stuff. And we're gonna see uh, all that. So the first thing when you want to uh, use the shell, it's uh, how to start it and set up your uh, environment, right? So let's have a look how we can do that. So the first thing is to install the shell. The, the shell you will, uh, the package is called MySQL shell. You have it for uh, many distribution. You have it uh, also for uh, multiple uh, operating system and all that kind of stuff. The latest version as we speak now is 8.0.25. And even if you use an older version of MySQL, mm -hmm. I encourage you to use the latest shell. So to start with the beautiful uh, interface, right? Uh, you, um, 
you can change the prompt. There are uh, different prompts uh, available um, when you install the shell directly, and uh, they are located depending of your distribution, but on Linux, they are in user share MySQL SH prompt. And there is a, a panel of different prompts there you can test. So here, there is uh, one uh, I want to use. And as you can see, I copy it in my home directory as a prompt.json in the .mysql sh uh, folder. And this is how uh, it looks like when I connect, uh, when I start it. Because when I start it, I'm not connected. This is the difference between MySQL shell and MySQL uh, classic client, right? Uh, with the client, when you started, you were already connected. You had to connect to a host, right? And uh, in this case, you can start it and you are not connected. You are in the shell. Then from the shell, you can connect. You can connect directly from the, the command line. You can do whatever you want. Right? So some tips or some configuration I always like to do when I'm using MySQL shell it's uh, to uh, enable the history autosave. So meaning that all the commands I will type in my shell will be saved in my history and give uh, increase a bit the history. I uh, increase it usually to 5,000 entry. If you want to switch between the mo um, between modes in the shell, you can do slash py to go to Python, slash uh, gs to go to JavaScript, slash SQL to go in SQL mode. By default, if you don't configure anything, you will be in JavaScript mode. If you prefer that every time you use the shell, you are in SQL mode, you can also uh, set up an option for that. And this option, it's called uh, default mode, right? So you do shell.options.setPersist default mode SQL. So easy. Now we have a nice SQL shell where you can start uh, to work with. So now, like the presentation, it's about the DBA task uh, and the shell, how the shell can, can use the MySQL DBA. So first thing to do, it's what does a MySQL DBA do? We need to define some tasks. And I cho I've chosen five tasks uh, that are, uh, I would say, the most common for uh, DBAs. <clears throat> the first thing is to deploy the architecture, right? or at least explain what and how to deploy the architecture to operators if the DBA is not the one that uh, deploys the architecture, right? But he has something to say about how to uh, deploy it and what to deploy, right? This is the first task. The second task is to prepare upgrades. Most uh, task of the DBA is to prepare upgrades between version, right? The third um, task is to do dump and load data. As a DBA, sometimes you say, okay, could you copy that data from this host to that host? Could you load that data to test in this uh, development environment? Could you do this and that? Uh, I need a copy of the data, a logical copy of this table. Can you help me on that? So the DBA uh, can do that. Uh, and it's one of the, the tasks the DBA has to do, right? Another task, it's to manage users. Most of the time, it's the DBA who uh, create the users that can connect to the database and it's the DBA that also uh, grant the privileges. And finally, maybe the most important one and uh, the one I would say that the DBA has to do daily, it's to understand the workload. So what's my database doing? What's the application doing with database? And how can I improve stuff? And do I have something to improve? So like I said, the first uh, part is this deploying architecture. To deploy architecture, what we use, we use the MySQL shell admin API. So what's that? The admin API, it's an API that uh, um, allows the DBA or the, the user that use the admin API to configure and manage in a DB cluster and in a DB replica sets uh, um, and among other things he, he can do with the admin API, right? So the admin API, it's available uh, using the DBA global object in the shell. And from there, you can do a lot of stuff. So uh, this, um, the use of the admin API allows to deploy architecture much easier than usual. 
so you no need to configure stuff to copy stuff and stuff like that and much secure because it as it does it very well and very uh, uh let's say controlled way it's much better and secure to deploy stuff without breaking uh, anything right it also uh the email api also include um, configuration so no need for you to configure anything manually it also do checks is this data for example is this data uh, on, on this machine compatible with the data that it's in a cluster if you want to join that cluster and stuff like that and it also do automatic data provisioning for you so meaning you have a machine you want to add it in a replication stream is it possible yes even if you if it's a let's say a machine that you just install from scratch without data it's all possible within the shell so um of course like everything the shell can do right this in mini api calls can be done interactively this is what a lot of people do at least the first time but also you can do it from the command line or uh, from a script so because of this it's possible to use all these command line uh, um, calls in a configuration management tool for example like puppet chef ansible or whatever so you can do all that directly using uh, the shell this is quite very nice uh, to do and finally, the new uh, MySQL operator for uh, Kubernetes also uh, used the MySQL shell to do all uh, its tasks. So it's, uh, as you can see, MySQL shell, it's, it's very powerful. So let's have a look to some uh, Amin API uh, example call, right? Interactive. So here we have, uh, I'm splitting the screen between InnoDB cluster and the InnoDB replica set, right? So first thing to do, so we are in the shell in a JavaScript mode. We want to uh, connect to one server. In this case, I will connect to MySQL one. So I do backslash C, the user and uh, the host. And as you can see, it doesn't ask me a password. So meaning that are already connected to it. And I saved because you can store the password if you want or not. Then for a cluster, I just create an object cluster and uh, I will put in that object the result of DBA create cluster and I give a name. So the, the method of the um, DBA, so in mini API uh, object, it's create cluster. If I would have done a replica set instead of a cluster, I would have done create replica set. So what's the big difference between these two, uh, InnoDB cluster and replica set? We have uh, a dedicated uh, track during Procona Life uh, from uh, Kenny Grip about data, uh, MySQL database architecture. But if you haven't seen it uh, yet, InnoDB cluster, it's a full automated HA solution uh, for MySQL with uh, uh, that... Uh, guarantees all the automatic failover and, and uh, no data lost uh, and stuff like that. The replica set, it's something like the old uh, replication, the known asynchronous replication. So this one, it's, a, it's also kind of an architecture where you have uh, one uh, replication source and several replicas, but they are linked by asynchronous replication, meaning the failover is not automatic and somebody needs uh, to do that or an external script or, or an operator need to do this uh, this switch in case there is an issue or not but so this is to create more something more like the uh, old uh, uh, repl asynchronous replication setup so then we can so we have mysql one that is configured and it's started as a cluster or as a part of a replica set and then we want to say, oh, we want to configure uh, MySQL 2 also. So how we do it? We do configure instance for InnoDB cluster, configure replica set instance for um, replica set. 
What does that do? It's checking the configuration, check if uh, GTIDs are enabled, for example, check if there is something, uh, uh, some information missing, some variables uh, that are uh, that need to be defined and stuff like that. And it will all do that for you and change the configuration directly and um, of the instance and restart it if needed, uh, bef but it will ask you if it needs to restart or not uh, the instance. All that it's using set persist. Uh, if you are uh, if you are familiar with that in MySQL 8, so we have to persist uh, to persist the uh, configuration variable without having to modify the files manual, the configuration file ma manual. So when it's configured, we want to add it to the cluster. So we do add instance, or in the replica set, what we do, we do add instance too. But this time, we do we call the add instance method of or um, uh, from a replica set object before it was from a cluster object. So as you can see, it's just some uh, methods, create a replica set or create a cluster, configure it, add an instance. And then when all it's installed and, and finished, you can also bootstrap MySQL router. So MySQL router will create user to monitor uh, everything it needs to, uh, to be able to connect to them. It will also uh, know all the situation of the cluster of the replica set by uh, connecting to the metadata that it has. And uh, it's very, very easy to do. So as you can see, this is very easy to configure all the stack from the MySQL shell admin API, right? Of course, other than configure your architecture, you also need to uh, manage it, right? And once again, MySQL shell admin API provides you all the methods you need to uh, manage your architecture. So this is all the methods uh, that uh, uh, that are available. So you can see, you can add an instance, you check an instance state. So you have an instance uh, that you want to add uh, to the cluster. You can see, oh, does it has a missing transaction or extra transaction? Will it be compatible with the data set that is running right now in the cluster? Stuff like that, it's possible. You can see, oh, describe my cluster or describe my replica set. You can dissolve it, stop this. You can uh, force quorum, you can list router, region instance, and a lot of stuff. In, in, a, in a DB cluster, you can switch between uh, switch the primary manually, manually, but you can also uh, change uh, the mode, if you have multi-primary or single primary mode and stuff like that. So there is a lot of stuff. And also you want to change the password because you want to change, there is a recovery account to do this asynchronous replication when you are in a cluster uh, to just when the machine was off and you add it again uh, to uh, do this recovery process, it has a password, right? Uh, an account and a password and you can change that account uh, whenever you want. Uh, also, this is possible. So there is a lot of uh, things to do. So this, this part was for the admin API. And the second point that we saw uh, earlier was prepare upgrades. So when we decide, oh, let's move to eight or inside eight, move to newer version, right? It's possible to use the shell to validate the upgrades to the latest version of MySQL 8 or previous version of my SQL 8, you can define that. So there is uh, another um, uh, global object, which is util, and it has a method that is called check for server upgrade. So with that, the shell will perform a series of tests and um, on, on the server you, you have specified and see if the upgrade will succeed or if it requires first some modification before you can migrate to 8.0, right? So, uh, so this will check the, the 5.7 installation, for example, and uh, or 8.0 uh, earlier version and see uh, how you can upgrade to, uh, to 8.0. So it will check for legacy issues. It will, uh, of course, you need to run that before. I've seen people running the check after they upgrade it, and then they were not that happy, right? Because if there is an issue, you will know uh, uh, after, and this is not the best uh, solution, right? And like I said, always use the latest version of the shell. So 
this upgrade checker utility, what type of checks does it do? So it will check if there is all temporal, uh, temporal type. This is something coming from uh, 5556 five, and it will check because this is won't be supported in 8.0. You need to modify that. So it will check if you don't have some uh, reserve keyword in, in your uh, tables or column and, and check because if you have some reserve keyword, you will have to quote them or to modify them. But at least you will be warned about that and you will know about that. It will check if you are using UTF-8 MV3, which is uh, obsolete now, and you should use UTF-8 MV4 with MySQL 8.0. And it will check some conflicting names uh, if you are using the, the MySQL schema to add your own tables, which is never really, uh, um, let's say, uh, recommended, but it's possible. So it checks that. And it checks if you have some engine that are not supported any, anymore and see a, a, a lot of test uh, is doing right and more than that uh, so it's checking all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but it doesn't scan the full data right it checks the metadata and the configuration you have and it will let you know if there is uh, an issue uh, or not so if you want to run that for example this is from a uh, the system so from the command line you will do mysql uh, shell and then you do double even util. So this is from the util uh, global object. Then the method, this method is checks for server upgrade. You connect to one server. So this one is local host. And you say, I want to go to 8024 from this machine. And I want the output to be a JSON. And this is where you can find the my CNF file for the server. Or you can do that also interactively directly from the shell. And this, this is how you do it. You do util dot e e in JavaScript, util dot check for, uh, for server upgrade, and then you connect the option are the password, the target version, where is the configuration, uh, and it does it. Or you can just do util check for server upgrade, and it will use the uh, con uh, the connection you are you have open in MySQL shell and try to start from there. So the output of it, of you will have all the tests. Uh, if you don't um, do a, in JSON output, this is what you will have. So some text uh, uh, readable output, and it will give you some information, some warnings or some errors. And here you can see it says, oh, you have some variables that are not defined in your configuration file, but the default has changed between version. So take a look at that, right? Also, here you can see, oh, there is, uh, it's checking if there is um, default to zero uh, in date, which is invalid now, and it will warn you, oh, watch out, there is some uh, column here that has default zero value for a date or date time or timestamp um, column, which is not recommended. And you can, you have all that information, then you can work on that before doing the upgrade. So this is a very uh, useful tool that I really recommend you to do. So this was the second point of the DBA uh, daily task or usual task. The other one was is dump and load, right? Logical dump and, uh, uh, and load uh, of the data. So this logical dumps, uh, if you do just want to, don't forget that if you just want to copy data from one server to another one, you can use always the clone, which is integrated in the in mini API. But here we are talking about logical dumps, right? And uh, so if you want to do logical dumps for backups, to, for migration, uh, to change data in, a, in development environment and so on, it's possible using, uh, you need logical dumps to do that, right? So MySQL uh, shell, once again, provides, and this time really, really, uh, amazing tool that uh, relegates completely all the, comp the competitors far behind. So uh, when I mean competitors, I mean programs to do logical dumps. So bye-bye MySQL dump, bye-bye MySQL pump, bye-bye my dumper. And if there are others, you can tell them bye-bye to all of them because the, um, the utility in MySQL dump, so in, my in MySQL shell, 
dump and load are really crazy for that. So MySQL, welcome MySQL shell load and dump. I really, really encourage you to, to test it and to use this uh, more than the usual um, MySQL dump. So there are three types uh, of dump that we can do. So dump an instance, so it will, we will dump the full instance, uh, dump a schema, so we will dump a full schema or dump uh, a table or multiple tables uh, only, right? So all these dumps are taken in parallel. So this is very nice. And uh, you will see that we can load them also in parallel. So it's uh, wonderful. But also it has other benefits, like you can dump uh, to remote storage. For example, you can remote to a OCI object store. You have a, a progress and uh, you can uh, track the progress of uh, the dump or of, of the load. Uh, there is compatibility for people that wants to move to uh, MDS. So you can check for the compatibility of your data and make modification if you want. You can, you have a resume and reset. You have, a, you can uh, add a, a rate limitation. So if you see that this is uh, armoring too much your system, you can slow down, you can use compression. And uh, you can also do, when you take a dump, you can do on fly some changes like create invisible primary keys. So this is wonderful. If you decide to say, oh, I want to take a dump to migrate to MDS, but, uh, and on MDS, I want to enable HA where primary keys are mandatory. I will do this and uh, you can enable the creation of this invisible primary key. So for your application, there is no change at all, but at least you know that you will have primary keys uh, invisible in, uh, in MDS. I always uh, recommend people to use uh, primary keys. And if you have none, use please use uh, invisible primary keys even uh, uh, locally if you're not on the cloud or whatever, you know, DB really uh, be, will be very happy in replication too. Then you can say, oh, I want to force the DB. So you, you take a dump on some other engines and, but you want that the dump says this will be in ODB only. You can do ignore missing primary keys, skip invalid accounts, and uh, and so on. Uh, a lot of stuff to do, like strip restricted uh, restricted grants, meaning that, for example, if you go on the cloud uh, and in MDS, there is some grants that user are not um, don't have, right? So you can say, oh, I want to dump uh, my uh, user also, and but. If there are some privileges that the user has and are not uh, available in the cloud, please remove them. So don't give me an error mm -hmm. on that. So when you have done all this, uh, so you have three methods to create them, but you have only one method to load, which is uh, the, uh, the load uh, method. And uh, this one, uh, because it will know what type of load it has to do uh, with the dump information, right? So, and here again, you can do, uh, of course it's in parallel, but there are other, other parameters uh, that are supported to give you the best uh, experience or what you need the most. For example, you can, you can say, oh, I want every time, after I've uh, um, loaded all my dump, I want to run um, analyze tables or I just want to run analyze tables on the table that have histograms, that's possible. I want to change the character set. I want, uh, uh, if your the dump was made without primary keys and uh, uh, without forcing primary keys, but you you have still uh, are missing primary keys then, but you want to have primary keys, you can at that time only add them, this is possible too. You can also defer the, the secondary indexes, you can see show progress, you can skip binary log, you, you can do a lot of stuff uh, with it. So it's very, very powerful. So take a look at this output. So this is something I run uh, myself, right? So, which is important here compared to uh, other stuff that also other tool that can also do in parallel, right? Uh, there, there is some tool that can do, for example, the dump in parallel, but not the load in parallel, or it can do the load in parallel if there are multiple schema or multiple tables. Look in this. So we have one table of uh, 65 gigabyte, one single table, right, in one schema. 
and it was loaded in three minutes, 17 seconds, uh, using the dump. So this is very fast for, it's in ODB, uh, so this is very cool, right? So, and also, like I said, uh, it has all included to help people to migrate to uh, MySQL database service on OCI. So uh, if you want to migrate to OCI, this is the easiest way to do it. It's to use uh, MySQL shell dump and load. So now let's see the uh, next task for the, our nice MySQL DBA, it's users and privileges, right? So the user uh, create a MySQL accounts and grants and stuff like that. It's also another important task for the MySQL DBA. And uh, yeah, this is one of the stuff. Please, could you add that user that I can access this table, uh, but please uh, make this account valid only for uh, next month and then that's it. Uh, people need to change their password or this or that. There is a lot. And uh, as you know, security is very, very important for MySQL 8, uh, for MySQL in general. And in MySQL 8, we uh, added uh, more feature related to do uh, to that. And, uh, and we also added more uh, granular privileges, right? So uh, in MySQL 8, we introduced some new stuff for that. And one of them, it's walls. So we have introduced walls. There is, of course, uh, we have a better uh, authentication method uh, for um, a plugin uh, to store the password by default, which is caching SHA2 password, right? We have also common and JSON attributes in the users if we want. We can generate random password and more uh, option regarding the old password. We can have an history and, and check if the password is not the same as the one uh, as the one uh, uh, before. Uh, so, and check what's the reuse interval. Uh, we can have some um, uh, requirement, define the, the policy of the password, but also say, oh, you give me, you need the current password when you want to change something, lock time and stuff like that. There is more stuff, uh, a, a, a lot to do with the, the user creation. So if you're not aware of all of that, please refer to the MySQL 8 uh, create user manual page. It has everything you need. So before I continue on this user privilege stuff, I want to show you something and to talk to you about something which is extending MySQL shell. So for repetitive or complex tasks, it's also possible to extend the MySQL shell with plugins. These plugins can be written by you, of course, or you can get them somewhere. And uh, so create user, it's a very good candidate for a plugin, depending on what you need to do, right? Uh, so some word of the pl uh, on plugins. Plugins can be written in Python or in JavaScript. I am doing uh, several plugins for demo or for uh, helping people, and they are mostly written in Python because uh, this is I prefer. I'm very bad in JavaScript. Sorry for the JavaScript guy. Better to not read my code in JavaScript. Uh, they are loaded when you start MySQL shell. So, and you can uh, install them locally on your laptop and connect to a remote server. The, the plugins will be uh, there, right? Uh, and it can use uh, local modules if you are using Python and you have some other local modules in Python that you want to use in your, in your uh, uh, shell script. It is completely possible. I already made some demo with, for example, ISBN where I was uh, giving the ISBN number of a book to add the book as a JSON document into document store uh, from the shell. This is possible. If you're interested, ask me, uh, I, will, I can sent you uh, to, the, to, the, to that information. So you can find, uh, like I said, multiple plugins uh, to test and to extend on uh, my GitHub. So github.com, Lofred, MySQL shell plugins. It's a valid name, right? So one of the of, of example I wanted to show you related to this uh, user uh, management, user privileges uh, and plugins is for example, Dumping all grants, uh, all user grants. So you can, uh, there is one um, plugin user and one of the method it's get user grants. 
And as you can see, this will give you all the creation of the user and the grants of uh, every user you have uh, in the server. So you can then just copy, copy paste them, put them in a file, do whatever you want. And, uh, or you can get them all or just some, the, the method allows you to also uh, do some search uh, with, uh, with the wildcard and stuff like that. So this is uh, very, very cool to do. Uh, and I think it's very useful. Another one, uh, it's for example, to copy user. You say, oh, now we have installed our, uh, our, a new server, or for example, oh, we have uh, uh, created our first instance uh, of uh, MySQL database service, so in OCI. I want, but uh, I want to make tests uh, with it, but first I want to just copy some of the user that will do the test. You can say, oh, copy the user from this server to that one uh, very easily, right? And if you are using a CI and there are some privilege that you need to strip, it will do it uh, for you uh, directly. So this is quite uh, very easy to do. And you can then uh, copy users. Another uh, example of what the plugin can help you in user management is if you are a very skilled DBA and uh, you want to provide to your junior DBA uh, the possibility to create user without having to remember all the syntax that it's true can be sometimes uh, complex and needs to read all the time uh, the the manual or if you want that all the user had the same are created the same way right it is also possible to uh, create like a wizard for for example i've created here a small demo wizard to do that so you say oh user create user and he said and it's interactive so he asks you oh what's the user account you want so you add the name uh, do you want to set the password or just leave it blank and it will be random then uh, does the, the user needs to change its password the first time it connects uh, do you want to lock the account after uh, three failed attempts and stuff like that so here uh, I said I left it blank uh, the user needs to change the password, I let the default, and it has to uh, change after three failed attempts. And this is the generated password uh, that you have to uh, send to the user and then it will be able to connect and to change its password, right? Uh, you can also say, oh, uh, this time I there is a small uh, parameter that if you enable it, it will also, also show you the, um, the output, uh, the syntax of the uh, created statement. So in this case, we're going to create a user, we add one. So uh, we put the password ourselves. Uh, does it need to, to change password? No. Do you want to be locked? We said yes. And this is what uh, the create statement looks like. So this is just an example, of course, but this is how the shell can help you to manage users and add some privileges and stuff like that. Now uh, you can they're, they're in the script uh, in the plugins uh, I have done um, I provide as a test or for people to test. Uh, there is one also uh, show authentication method that uh, gives you all the users and which authentication method they are using. So, for example, we can see that on this server. The old way to uh, the old way to uh, authentic to save the, the password and to authenticate uh, the authenticate plugin, which is the MySQL native password. You can see there are twenty still twenty users using it, and the new one it's only six, right? So we can see that uh, very easy, and then we can check which one they are and and ask them to change. We can also do oh remember I create some users and say oh some password need to expire. And for example, I can say, oh, show me uh, the password uh, expires soon. And it will give me here, okay, this user, Jundu, has a password that will expire in 10 days. So you can have the list of all the uh, password that will expire soon. And there is also a possibility to see uh, without the soon, all the expired password we have. So this is one uh, of the points that we can do uh, with the shell. So, and finally, the uh, 
last topic uh, that a MySQL DBA has to do almost daily, it's to understand the workload. So what's happening on the server? So in MySQL 8.0, we have worked a lot in the observability. So, and we have improved information schema, performance schema, sys schema. Uh, they are all constant evolution. Every uh, release, there is something new in there and uh, that uh, helps us uh, to, to have, yeah, helps the DBA to have more, uh, to know what's going on and to have uh, more details of what's happening, right? And, uh, but, Unless you deal with this uh, scheme every day, sometimes I agree it could be complicated. There is so much information there that you can sometimes uh, lose uh, your way, right? And uh, but there again, the shell can be helpful for you. You can search only once what you are looking for, make the and try to get that information and add. Uh, uh, this in a plugin for the shell, and then everybody will be able uh, to use it in uh, uh, in your organization, right? So I have created already uh, several plugins that provide uh, useful information about the workload, right? And uh, so there is mostly two um, two plugins with uh, a lot of methods, which are check uh, the check plugin and the InnoDB plugin. So with the check plugin. You can see here we have uh, a bunch of methods like get the amount of uh, DDL, so uh, get the bin logs, so how much bin logs were we have, and uh, which um, what's the I/O in the bin logs, and but much more. Give me the queries that does full table scan. Give me the the, the table without primary key, uh, and much more information. For example, you can see also the the size uh, of transaction. This is read from the binary logs to, to really have uh, uh, the amount that when you use replication that will be uh, transfer and stuff like that. So we have a, there is a lot of uh, information here and uh, uh, also the same for in DB. Do you have uh, fragmented tables? Uh, what's the checkpoint age and stuff like that? So you can get a lot of information. So uh, if you don't know where to find that in sys performance information schema, use one of these methods or create your own methods to do, uh, to do whatever you want. It's much easier for you to use. So let's have a look uh, at an example of this. For example, check workload info. So we can see here, okay, on this machine, we have the query write that is uh, read at 100% and the uh, SB test that it's right at 100%. So uh, this is, and we can see that the workload of the server, it's a 99.98% of writes, only writes on this machine. We can check the amount of DDL, for example, and here you have an information, how many uh, DDL have been done since the restart of the server. Just for information to understand what the server is doing and what MySQL it's spending time with, right? Checkpoint. What's a checkpoint? So you can see, oh, get checkpoint age, and it gives you, oh, in ODB is using two files of uh, 48 megabyte, and the checkpoint age now uh, it's uh, as on 3.18 megabyte of the 96, so only 2% of uh, um, the transaction lock I use. So we can see uh, not, not, not problematic now here, right? So if you want to get a lot of more information on all these methods, I point you to this, uh, to the wiki on the GitHub uh, for the MySQL shell plugins repository, and you will find there an example of each of them, right? Also something that the DBS do, it's to find the slow uh, query and uh, inefficient queries, right? So for example, we want to say, oh, uh, give me the full uh, table, uh, the query that does the most full table scan. So in this, when you use this method and you don't put a limit, so in between uh, the um, brackets, it will show you the, the, the top one and then it will provide, it will also ask you interactively some questions. So if we do this without uh, any parameters, you can see, okay, this is the one uh, that uh, does full table scans, right? And then it tells you, okay, do you want to have an explain of it? You can say yes, no, 
Here we say, yes, we have the explain. Oh, do you want the explain in JSON format? Yes, and you have the explain. Oh, do you want to have the tree format? Yes. Do you want to have also uh, explain analyze run of it? You can say yes. So you can have this interactive uh, shell plugins that provide you a lot of information, very easy as a DBA to use. Also something that we have in MySQL 8, uh, the people are missing when they use MySQL 8, it's the old profiler, for example, right? If you remember query profiler, it's something that uh, um, we don't have anymore when we did show profile, right? You can recreate your own profiler or use this one uh, as an example or uh, update it to do that within uh, the shell. So as you can see, you can start the profiling, then you do the query and then you ask uh, the profiling of the query and it gives you, okay, this is all the queries that were done in this session, which one do you want to profile? And it shows you different color, the one he has profile information, the one he has not enough profile information because it was not enabled yet. So you can see, and then you have all the profile like you had uh, usually, and you can say something different in this is say, oh, I want to get the profile of another query. So not from mine, but from uh, another foreground thread, it's possible. So you can say, oh, I want this. And then you can enter it and see all that information too. So this also helps the DBA to understand what's going on and uh, what is MySQL doing. Something which I'm very, which I like also to work with and to uh, to deal and to, uh, to fix is the query execution plan. So this is most, uh, I think at least, uh, important part of the MySQL DBA's job. It's to control this query execution plan for the queries. And uh, I made a plugin also uh, for the shell that uh, can give you the query execution plan, the cost of it, and you can save it and compare it. So you can compare between different versions if the query execution plan has changed, for example, and you can see the difference. So this is very, uh, very interesting. So as you can see here, for example, uh, you say, okay, I will call the, um, the plugin its query execution plan. You will run the get. So he asks you, okay, enter a query. So you enter the query here, right? And he says, oh, the cost of this query, it's 2.40. So if you want to have, then he asks you, do you want to have the explain output? You can say yes or no. Do you want the JSON format, the tree format? Do you want to run uh, explain analyze of it? You can answer. And if you say yes, you will see it there directly in the shell. And then he says, oh, the last query execution plan saved for this query on here, it was the 3 of March, had uh, also a cost of two of four. Do you want to compare it with another one? Here, in this case, I just say yes to see, and we can see that we have already three query execution plan, and we can see that we have two for uh, 8 or 23. So maybe in between we have changed some indexes or something like that. We had one for 8 or 21, and then you say, oh, I want to compare it with the, uh, the one that has a cost of 636. Uh, you, and again, it gives you the difference uh, uh, query execution plan of the two queries. So you can then, uh, understand what's going on when you do a new one and you see oh no it's much slower the cost is slower what's happening so you can verify all that so this plugin so once again the shell helps you to uh, as a dba to find that information right so uh, you can get the code here and pull request requests are welcome of course so you can go uh, on github and just uh, something more more control, just an extra uh, here. If sometimes the DBA needs to, to, to file with the configuration change, right? So who changed this, informa this information on my server? Why is this like that now? So we uh, there is a, a config plugin that helps you to get information of which data, it's, uh, which variables are not using the default globally or session which uh, table are uh, persisted, uh, which variables have been persisted and uh, give me more information of a variable. Everything that MySQL has of a, for a variable, it can give it to you. So we can see here, for example, uh, if we use get variable info for max connection, it gives you, oh, this uh, was compiled. So this is the default. Uh, and this is the minimum value, the max value, 
when it was set by Wu, it's a default, so nothing changed, and the uh, value is 151. But you say you can also say, oh, I want to know all the persisted variables on this system. And here you have the information of all the variables that have been persisted and changed by Wu at what time and the value and where it comes from. It's always persisted because this is what we are looking for, right? And once again, uh, get variable info, and I will take uh, one of the variable. I want to have a vertical output and not a column output. And we can see that, for example, in the BFT min token size has been persisted. It's in that file. The minimum value is zero. The max value is 16. The current value is two. It has been done uh, in 2020, in June, by Giuseppe on local host. So you can see, you can do a lot of stuff with the shell. It helps the DBA to do whatever it needs to do. So thank you very much for following this uh, session. So if you have any question, I will be now uh, answering them live. So, and uh, if you don't have time to uh, ask now, or if you don't there, just uh, ask me uh, on, the on my blog or on Twitter. Thank you very much and bye-bye.